By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a clash of expansions. I am playing with my mono black zombie deck. It's fully revised. And I'm taking on Plague Doctor, who's got very cool uh, alpha beta collection and he's bringing an alpha deck to the table here we see it on the screen it's red and it's green it's pretty fierce so we're going to see who is going to win this clash is it going to be revised or is it going to be alpha now before we go to the action itself we first have a deck tech section as always now if you want to skip this no worries check the description below there you will find several timestamps one of those reads mtg games click on there and that will take you straight to the games and here we are going to continue with the deck tech and I'm going to start with my own deck, Zombie Disco. And this is the deck that I am playing today. And if you're a regular visitor of Timmy Talks, you've probably seen this deck before. So this is my Zombie Disco deck. It's fully revised except for the Hatless Horseman. I just love the art by Quentin Hoover. I do believe for this particular matchup, I actually switched it, switched it with Scave Zombies number four. So I'm sorry. Uh, I probably should have kept the Hatless Horseman in there. Uh, but the idea of the deck is pretty straightforward, right? Um, zombie Master does two things, right? It's kind of built around Zombie Master. Zombie Master gives all the zombies regeneration and it gives all the zombies swamp walk. So basically you want to take advantage of that as much as you can. Now, regeneration and Neveneural's disc, they go hand in hand. I can pop the disc, kill all the creatures and everything else on board except for the lands. And then I can regenerate all my creatures. I can regenerate the willows. I can regenerate the zombies if I've got a zombie master on board. So that is actually pretty safe. So that's the big idea. I destroy everything at my opponent's side and I keep all my stuff. The other strategy is Swamp Walk. So I've got four Evil Presence. Evil Presence turns any land into a basic swamp, right? So I play Evil Presence. I give him a swamp. Then my creatures have Swamp Walk and I'm going to walk all over him. Literally, you know, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to win the game because my creatures are now unblockable. Um, that's also the reason why I'm playing with two Bok Rafts um, in the main board, you know, 3-3 three, three Swamp Walk. And I think those creatures can become very powerful as, as well because you may think, okay, a 3-3 three, three for 4. But I also have three Bad Moons in this deck. And those Bad Moons are going to pump all my black creatures. So that Bok Rath, is most likely going to be a 4-4, in some cases even a 5-5 or a 6-6 in the ideal scenario. And when you've got a 6-6 unblockable, oh man, right? That sounds completely different, doesn't it, than a 3-3, 4-4. No, this can be a 6-6 for 4. That's the ideal situation. Um, and also, just because I love the creatures so much, and I think they kind of go in sync with the whole zombie theme, I've got Royal Assassin, who's like the bad guy of black, right? You always wanted to play that. So it's just... Very strong creature, epic creature that I want to play. And kind of as a beater at the end of the game, I've got my Nightmare in. I mean, I'm playing Mono Black, so that Nightmare can be absolutely huge. So this is the deck. Um, if you like this deck, by the way, and you want to see more matches after this one, uh, have a look on my channel, because I've got a lot of Zombie Disco matches. So I, I really enjoy playing this deck, I guess just because of its simplicity and it's, it's surprisingly strong. And I guess for old school, it's pretty budget friendly. So if you like what you see, maybe you can make your own um, version of this zombie disco deck. Anyway, this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent, the Alpha Red and Green build. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Plague Doctor. So he's playing with a completely Alpha deck. How cool is that? And this is a red and a green deck. And I think red and green... That combination is kind of known for three things. First off, creatures, right? We see a lot of creatures in this deck. Second off, ramping, you can ramp. In this case, we've got four Lanawar Elves that can ramp him and can help him. You know, if he starts Lanawar Elves turn one, then turn two, he can have often troll. Turn three, he can have, I don't know, War Mammoth, Giant Spider, and he can keep ramping up. So keep playing bigger and bigger creatures. With that, he can deal damage, you know, early combat damage, because maybe the opponent, which is me, isn't ready yet to block all those heavy hitters. And then he can finish me off with like the third thing that you see in red and green, direct damage, right? So red and green is traditionally a very strong combination of creatures, ramp, and direct damage. And the direct damage, don't underestimate it in this deck because we see three lightning bolts, alpha lightning bol bolts, how cool is that? Uh, and we're seeing three fireballs and two disintegrates. So those X spells, they kind of worry me because we also have a gauntlet of might in this deck. How cool is that? Four to cast, all red creatures gain plus one, plus one, and all mountains, they tap for double red instead of single red. 
So, I mean, Gauntlet of Might is huge with an X spell. He's also playing with Mana Flare, another uh, card that makes all your land produce double mana. At least Mana Flare also works for me, but I think that Plague Doctor can do so much more with the mana than I can. You know, I can just play out a couple of more zombies, but Plague Doctor, oof. Unless, unless of course, I draw into a Drain Life, you know, that can be pretty uh, suicidal if I have a Drain Life and, and he plays a Mana Flare. But besides that, I mean, Mana Flare in general should work better for him. He also has a Hurricane, by the way, as another X spell to deal some damage. Now, there's one card I'd like to um, pick out of this beautiful bunch of cards. There are many cards that I can talk about. But one of the cards that I think could actually play a role in this game and hardly sees any play is Raging River. So Raging River is this card that hasn't been reprinted after Unlimited. And it's an enchantment for two red. And it's just, it's such a funky card. So I just want to read it to you. Whenever one or more creatures you control attack, I'm reading the current Oracle text, by the way. Uh, whenever one or more creatures you control attack, each defending player divides all creatures without flying they control into a left pile and a right pile. Then for each attacking creature you control, choose left or right. That creature can be blocked this combat except by creatures with flying and creatures in a pile with the chosen label. Now what's so cool about this card is um, that you're basically you're forcing your opponent to divide the creatures into two groups and then you as the attacker can choose the most favorable path. Now usually Raging River doesn't do much because a lot of players play with flying creatures or hardly play with any creatures at all. In this matchup, which I think is really cool, I'm playing with hardly any flyers. I'm playing with tons and tons of creatures. Plague Doctor is playing with tons and tons of creatures. So I think Raging River can actually be deciding in this matchup. Could be. I'm not saying it's going to be, but it could be. So I'm really looking forward to see that. Another card I'm really looking forward to because I just love the art is Clockwork Beast. So Clockwork Beast, six to cast for a 7-4. But um, all these, the seven power is huge, right, for old school. Getting seven power for six mana, that is really a good deal. But of course it has a downside. Every time you attack or block with it, it loses a counter, a plus one plus O counter. So it gets smaller every time you use it. And then you can recharge it during your upkeep, but then it taps itself, which you basically see with all the Clockwork, uh, clockwork creatures, right? Clockwork Beast being the first one in that series. After that, you got Clockwork Avian, you had a couple of Clockwork Swarm, and a couple of other ones that came after this print. But this is the OG print, right? This is the alpha print, so it's really nice to see it. Hopefully, it gets to see some play. I'm looking forward to that. So this is the deck of my opponent, Plague Doctor. We've seen my deck. Now, let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the left. My opponent, Plague Doctor, is sitting on the right. So I'm playing Mono Black, completely revised a zombie deck. And ooh, Plague Doctor taking a mulligan here. He's playing with the red and green alpha deck. So that's a bit of bad luck for him here, having to take that mulligan. They're counting up seven in hand. Has to put one on the bottom, I guess. It looks like I'm keeping, by the way. Okay, putting one on the bottom, and here we go off to the races, starting with a Will o' the Wisp, turn one. Usually, when you're playing black, you see your opponent tapping, like, oh no, Dark Ritual Hippie. Don't worry, play Doctor. There's, there are no hippies in this deck. And uh, there is a Mountain and a Lightning Bolt. Bolt the Wisp. Usually, it's Bolt the Bird. Now it's Bolt the Willow. Willow's gone. And finding an evil presence, turning his mountain into a basic swamp and passing turn. The Plague Doctor is, of course, playing with two colors, so maybe this can set him back a little bit. But look at that, he's found another mountain again, passing turn. So no green sources yet for him, no Lunar Elves or Grizzly Bears on turn two for Plague Doctor. Finding swamp number three, passing turn. That's quite interesting. Usually I'm able to cast something on turn three, Scave Zombies or Zombie Master. Maybe a Bokrath. There is, oh, a nightmare, an early nightmare because of the Dark Ritual. So nightmare is power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps that I control. So it's now a 4-4 flyer. There we see a Goblin Balloon Brigade, but this means I can bash for four, possibly for five if I have another swamp. It looks like I don't. Attacking here, Plague Doctor dropping to 16 and playing a Nevenerals Disc. Okay, that's quite interesting. So playing the Disc. Probably, I mean, I'm not going to use it, but look at my hand size. I only got two cards in hand. That's not a lot. There's a Grizzly Bears. Is he going to keep it for chump blocking or is he going to swing in for one? That's the question now. 
And he's going to swing and going to drop to 19. So he's going to open it up. If I can find another swamp, it's a 5-5. Five five. Exactly. And now I can swing in, going to drop. Plague Doctor's going to drop to 11 here, probably. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. And playing a Willow, which is a great defense against the Grizzly Bear and the Goblin Balloon Brigade. So now the question is, does he want to attack with two or don't attack at all? It's going to be really difficult for him to get rid of the Nightmare. The best way of doing that is with one of his X spells, but he doesn't have enough land. Not drawing any land. You see he's stuck on land, changing his forest into a swamp, making matters even worse. Giving it flying here. What I could have done, by the way, I think maybe this is, I wouldn't call it a misplay, but I could have chosen the mountain. There is a disrupting scepter. It's not going to do much in this game. So I could have changed the mountain into a swamp and then he couldn't have given his Goblin Balloon Brigade flying and he would have been on one life by now. Tapping three, there's an Orcish Artillery. Actually, it's only two, right? The Elf Edition. That's one of those famous misprints, but he is tapping three. Attacking here with my 5-5, five five, going to put him on one. So it could have been dead by now if... If I would have changed that mountain earlier into a swamp. But chose to kind of block his green source. So he's on one, passing turn here. I mean, this is nearly impossible, right, for Plague Doctor. First thing on, on, on business, he needs... No, he, does, he needs a, a green source to cast something flying to block. Nope, nope, this is it. Game one really won because of that early, early nightmare. And there was nothing that Plague Doctor could do about that. You know, he, that's the thing with... Um, with green and, and red in alpha, um, you don't have access to, to any spot removal. You know, you don't have a fissure, for example. So that makes it difficult. So we had to kind of try to get enough lands to to kill it with like disintegrator fireball, or the other option would have been, you know, get a couple of giant spiders on there with giant groves and try to kill them that way. But unfortunately for Plague Doctor, he had some issues with the mana in this first game. Luckily, we have more games to come. So um, let's go to game number two. Game number two, here we go. It's Plague Doctor on the play, starting with a forest passing turn, basic swamp. And there is another evil presence. Oh, Plague Doctor must think, oh, not another one. I'm not sure. Did he have Tranquilities in his sideboard? Because then he could have played, uh, can he put a, he could have boarded in a Tranquility. That's what I'm trying to say, uh, to get rid of the evil presence. There we see Orcish Artillery. So the cool thing is in Alpha, it's only one red and one. It's actual casting cost is two red and one. But in Alpha, they did a little misprint. So it's actually a really good card in Alpha. So a 1-3 for 2 mana. And you can tap it to deal 2 damage to any target, but it deals 3 damage to you. So it's pretty strong here. And I'm playing a Will-O-The-Wisp. Luckily, I have 1 black to regenerate. There's a Disintegrate. Ah, uh, it removes it from the game. I cannot regenerate. Attack by the Artillery. So early pressure from Play Doctor. And, okay, playing Dark Ritual. And a drain life. Okay, so I'm draining the artillery, which is kind of okay, I guess, but it is a two for one though. I'm losing two cards in hand just to get rid of one artillery. So it already looks like a much more entertaining game, let me put it that way, than, um, than in game one, which was more one-sided. There we see a giant spider. So Plague Doctor is finding the right lands. What can he do against this giant spider? Tapping three, probably escape zombie or a zombie master. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank. I think what I'm thinking about is, do I want to play Scave Zombie first or Zombie Master? And I think Scave Zombies is the way to go because then next turn I can play the Zombie Master, which gives the Scave Zombies sw uh, Swamp Walk and I can just attack because Plague Doctor has that swamp because of the evil presence. There's the swing of two. So I'm going to drop back to 20 again after that earlier drain life. There is a Grizzly Bear 2-2 two -two Vanilla and playing a Swamp. Tapping three. Will we see the Zombie Master now? Okay, there we see the Zombie Master. So that means my Scave Zombies now is Regeneration and Swamp Walk. So I'm going to attack. He cannot block it because he has a Swamp. Going to take two damage. And there's a weakness. Okay, that's interesting. Minus two, minus one. I'm going to put it... Okay, it looks like I'm putting it on the Giant Spider. So Giant Spider is now an 0-3. And he can block creatures with flying, right? That's his special ability. So two very epic cards on the table there. There is a Goblin Balloon Brigade, a 1-1... And for one red, you can give it flying. And now he's passing turn, so I'm untapping. And 
I'm attacking here, dealing two more damage. So he's going to drop to 16. Is he going to attack? He can, of course, attack by giving the Goblin Balloon Brigade flying. And look at this. This is interesting. So he's attacking with everything. He's kind of challenging me to block the Grizzly Bear, but I'm very hesitant because if he has a Giant Growth or something, like he can kill my Zombie Master when I block, and I really want to keep my Scape Zombies as a 2-2 regenerating Swamp Walker, so I'm choosing not to. So taking the damage, going to 17, attack it with the Scave, and Plague Doctor is going to drop to 14. But, I mean, this is bad business because there's another Grizzly on the side of Plague Doctor. He can now attack with three creatures. Well, with four, I guess, but that Giant Spider doesn't do much. It's pretty funny that he keeps attacking with the Giant Spider, though. I think... Yeah, taking the damage here, going to 12. I think maybe I should just block at a certain point with the Zombie Master. Not sure what I have in hand. Maybe there's a reason I'm not doing it. Um, I am, of course, afraid of, of a pump spell or something. Playing a Nevenerals Disc. That can be really, really good because I can pop the disc and regenerate my Scape Zombies. The question is, am I now going to attack? I mean, yeah, I think I think this is a good decision. Not attacking for a moment. Staying on 12. He's probably going to attack me with his two Flyers. Or he's going to go all in because of the disc. Of course, he's going to go all in. That makes absolute sense. Regenerating scape zombies. We're putting on a regeneration shield, as it, as it's called these days. And it looks like I'm blocking one of the grizzly bears, right? I'm dropping to eight here. Still not blocking with my scape zombie. Uh, sorry, my zombie master. Really being protective about that one, that one zombie master. Okay, attacking with both. He's going to drop to ten. Playing a Willow, does it mean that next turn during combat, I probably want to pop the Nevenerals disc? I wonder if I'm going to do that, because now he's lost that Grizzly Bear. There's like less beef on the table. He's attacking with everything. So if I block the Grizzly Bear with the Willow, I only take two, go down to six. And I can go on the swing back with the Zombie Master again. I can deal four more damage. He's going to go to six as well. So maybe it's worth it just to... Block the Grizzly, take two, instead of popping the disc. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Going to six, taking damage from the Script Sprites and the Goblin Balloon Brigade. Untapping here. What are we going to see? Playing another Swamp, tapping two. Okay, there's a Bad Moon. Whoa, that's bad news for my opponent here. Bad Moon, in response, Lightning Bolt. In response to the Bad Moon cast, he's casting a Lightning Bolt on the Zombie Master. Which makes sense, because Zombie Masters are 2-3, and having a bad moon means it's out of Lightning Bolt range. I wonder if he had that Lightning Bolt for a while, because he was really he was really playing it nice. You know, keep attacking, putting, putting me, um, giving me tough choices to make. So it looks like I'm putting a Regeneration Shield on the Scape Zombies. After that, I'm attacking. So he's going to drop to 7, and then I'm probably going to pop the disc, right, because I have I've got a regeneration shield on, probably going to regenerate the Willow, putting a regeneration shield on Willow, and then using the disc. So destroying everything, and my creatures have regeneration. So it's not too bad. I mean, Plague Doctor can now um, change his swamp back into, what was it, a mountain, I guess. It looks like he's forgetting that, but just to note, that's no longer a swamp, that's not just a basic, because the evil presence is gone out of the game. So I believe it's a mountain actually playing. Yeah, he's changing now. Okay, it was a forest. Um, playing Zombie Master. Ooh, this is unfortunate for Plague Doctor that I top deck another Zombie Master. He's on four. This is tough. This is tough. Playing Bad Moon. If I attack with everything, I think he's dead. Why am I not attacking with everything? Okay, <laughs> this is stupid. I'm giving him a chance here. He's going to go to one. I'm giving him a chance. I'm giving him an extra turn. I think I pointed that out as well. And there's... Oh, wait a minute. He can play a land. Use the hurricane. Tap for six. So basically, it's a draw. Wow. If I would have just attacked with the willow. Okay. Well, that's a mediocre magic from my side. But really cool to see uh, Plague Doctor making it into a draw. So that means we're going to have a game on number three. Game number three, and there is Plague Doctor starting with the mountain. I'm starting with a Willow 01 Regenerator. 
You don't see it as much, the willow, in, um, in today's old school scene, but it used to be such a staple. There's a lightning bolt by Plague Doctor. No force for him, by the way. Guess okay, so we're talking about this. I think I'm explaining that maybe I made a mistake playing Willow early instead of waiting exactly what I'm doing now, just waiting until turn two so I have a black source open to regenerate it. I think I've made this mistake before when I'm playing black. The thing is, Willow is not an aggressive card, so if there's no pressure on the table, you might as well just wait a turn to play it out so you always have that regeneration option. There's a forest, so Plague Doctor finding a green source. Does that mean he can do something here? Oh, Fireball of one. Regenerating it, and then a bolt? <laughs> he really wants to get rid of the Willows. Wow, I am a little surprised. I wonder what the rest of his hand is. Perhaps it's not that good that he's playing this aggressively against the Willow. Because it, it, it costs him two pretty good spells just to get rid of this one Willow. And I'm playing out a Zombie Master. 2-3. It's going to give all my zombies regeneration and swamp walk. So hopefully I can find a scave zombies to make use of my zombie master. Or another zombie master because it actually the, the creature type has been changed from summon lord to summon zombie. I believe. So it's also a zombie. So when you've got two zombie masters on board, they kind of give each other the ability. Ooh, a bad moon. Oh, this is interesting, a Berserk over my own Zombie Master, so that doubles its power, but it then does die at the end of the turn. I think this is a good decision by Plague Doctor, just taking six damage for once and then getting rid of the Zombie Master. Now let's see, is there anything else I can do? It looks like I can, so I'm passing turn here. Just no creature. Are there finally going to be some creatures? War Mammoth, perhaps? Oh, Gauntlet of Might. We haven't seen Raging River, by the way. We haven't seen Clockwork Beast. I'm hoping we're going to see those. And this Gauntlet of Might is very powerful. All his red lands now tap for double red. So I'm very vulnerable to burn here. I'm just hoping that he can play out like a Clockwork Beast next turn. He's got seven mana. Playing Navaneral Disc, ooh, kind of ruining my own dream here. It's probably not going to play out anything big. Playing out another Force, perhaps just going to pass and wait. There are no threats on the board. So he's now got six, seven, eight mana to spend. Oh, direct damage. Disintegrate to the dome. Ah, taking seven damage. You're going to go down to 13. I wonder what I'm going to do. Do I really want to pop the disc for one gauntlet? On the other hand, if I'm going to just keep waiting for things to happen, I'm just going to die. You know, probably to direct damage. Only one card in hand, by the way, by Plague Doctor. So that is pretty good. Tapping one. Another Willow. Oh, I'm popping the disc. Okay, getting rid of the gauntlet. I'm just too afraid of other X spells finishing me. And, uh, okay, tapping a Swamp. Another Willow, I've already played two. Dark Ritual and a Bok Wrath. Okay, a Wraith, I think you say Wraith, right? A Bok Wraith, it's AI. Um, so it's a 3-3 Swamp Walker. So I can start putting some pressure on those Swamps, of course, for Plague Doctor. Will we see a Lightning Bolt on the Bok? That is the question here. Or just a Goblin Balloon Brigade. Talking about the creature, what is he going to do? Yeah, lightning bolt. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. I had a dream, but now it's gone. Bolt. Tapping four. JM Day Tome. Okay, this is not too shabby. If Plague Doctor doesn't play like a big creature threat, well, actually, this is big enough. Grizzly Bear 2-2. Two -two. At least it's not a Crawl Worm. He also has a Crawl Worm in his deck. Doesn't have enough Lando to play it yet. It's really nice to see all these grizzly bears. Look at my hand. I've got three cards in hand. What do I have in there? Why am I not? Okay, drawing a card, finding a swamp. Passing turn. I really wonder what's in my hand. Attacking for two. Gonna drop to 11. Playing Lana or else. Okay, maybe it's a nightmare in hand. Hopefully I can then find a land, cast nightmare here. And there's a royal assassin. That's actually pretty good can start killing me some grizzly bears. It's got summoning sickness still though, so not yet. There's a pass turn, look at that. Plague Doctor already played a lot of his direct damage. 
playing Swamp number six. And now I can do this game and step draw a card, get some card advantage going. He's attacking. Okay, killing it. What is he going to do in response? Grizzly Bear is gone. I expected something here. I guess it's not coming. I wonder what Plague Doctor had in mind because it seemed like he wanted to do something and then changed his mind. So maybe he made a little error there. Tapping six and there is a Nightmare 6-6 six, six Flyer. We saw this creature do wonders in game number one for me. Is he going to win game number three for me as well? Another uh, mountain here. So he can't, does he have, yeah, he has enough to play a burn spell or actually play a hurricane to kill the Nightmare. He's on eight now. He really has to do something against the Nightmare. I mean, he's on eight, so he probably has one more turn to go after this one. If he cannot deal with the Nightmare. If he can deal with the Nightmare, it's a whole different story. He's kind of almost back in the game. Of course, the problem here is I'm not even drawing a card from my Gem de Tome. That is, that is a mistake. That's bad. Anyway, attacking here. He's going to drop to two. Like in a standstill situation, uh, Jam Day Tome is great, and I'm even ahead on board, which makes it even better. Oh, two-headed giant, such a cool card. So four-four creature with trample for one red and and, uh, and four, I believe. It's a pretty good creature. Unfortunately for my opponent, Nightmare has flying. Wow, I must say Nightmare is really the MVP of uh, this matchup. But thank you, Plague Doctor, for this very, very cool game, man. You've got a beautiful deck. You've got a beautiful collection. Um, we also played a match uh, earlier to this, uh, which was also a very cool alpha game. So I'll put a, a link to that specific match in the description below. That was really a cool match to watch as well. So if you enjoy this deck by Plague Doctor, then check out that match as well. That's in the description below. And for now, I want to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, um, you can do that quite easily. You can leave a like. That's always appreciated. Just hit that thumbs up button. You're really, really helping the channel grow just by doing that uh, simple move with your cursor. Uh, what you can also do is leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these matches. Would you like to see more revised games? Would you like to see more alpha games? Let me know, you know, I, I read it, I take it in, and um, yeah, it, it influences the content I make. So let me know what you think of these matches. Um, what else you can do is become a subscriber. If you're not a sub yet, uh, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel moving forward. Um, and then you can also become a sponsor of the show. How cool is that? And when you become a sponsor, your name will appear in the end scroll. So how can you do that? There's probably an info card popping up right now. Just click on that info card. That will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can read all about it. And you can already support Timmy Talks starting $1 a month. So of course, it's up to you. But if you enjoy the content, if you've got a dollar to spare, please consider becoming a patron. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at all the fantastic, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!